Hello learners, I am Dr. Poonam Magrawal and in this video I will be talking to you regarding regulation of glycolysis at the step of PFK1. PFK1 is the rate limiting step of glycolysis, rate limiting step of glycolysis and this is the topic of today. I will have to discuss how this PFK1 activity is regulated, rate limiting step, rate limiting enzyme of glycolysis and incidentally this pfk1 is also the committed step of the glycolysis because because its product is committed for glycolysis alone its product is fructose 1,6 bisphosphate but my focus is to discuss you pfk1 regulation in presence of insulin and contrainsulin hormones this is the glycolysis you can see the glucose converted to pyruvate and then lactate ultimately. There are many steps and uh, the purpose of this video is not to describe the glycolytic steps. Rather, I would like to discuss you the enzyme PFK1. This is PFK1 enzyme, PFK1 enzyme, which is converting fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate. This is rate limiting enzyme as I just now told you. This is committed enzyme also because fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate is committed for glycolysis alone. This PFK1 is one important allosteric enzyme which is having allosteric control. It has got allosteric regulators. It has got positive and negative allosteric regulator for it. Positive regulators are AMP and fructose 2, 6 bisphosphate. Fructose 2, 6 bisphosphate. AMP and fructose 2, 6 bisphosphate. Negative regulators for PFK1 are ATP, citrate and protons. This you need to remember first of all that PFK1 is a allosteric enzyme having positive and negative allosteric control. If AMP is high in the cell, it denotes the energy deficient state and that increases the activity of PFK1 and hence glycolysis and then the ATP is produced. The main purpose of glycolysis is ATP production. So whenever AMP is high, it is denoting the energy deficient state and that in turn is increasing PFK1 activity and this activity when increased increases the glycolysis and hence the ATP production. Similar fashion when ATP is high, the glycolysis is down regulated because PFK1 activity is inhibited. Fructose 2, 6 bisphosphate is one very important biomolecule, the concentration of which determines the PFK1 activity. This is a positive allosteric regulator of PFK1. So whenever this is high, the PFK1 activity will be high and whenever the level of fructose 2, 6 bisphosphate is low, the activity of PFK1 will be low. The question is what is fructose 2, 6 bisphosphate and how it is produced in the cytosol? What is the substrate for fructose 2, 6 bisphosphate and if it is decomposed, if it is degraded, into what compound it is converted into. Let me tell you this fructose 2, 6 bisphosphate is a very important compound which is produced when the insulin is there. So when the insulin is there, this fructose 2, 6 bisphosphate increases. And when glucagon is there, this fructose 2, 6 bisphosphate decreases. 
now let's understand this point this is the most important point over here to understand the pf given regulation and once you understand the role of fructose 2 6 bisphosphate in regulating pf given activity and more importantly the level of fructose 2 6 bisphosphate how it is regulated in the cytosol in presence of insulin and contrainsulin hormone you completely understand how the insulin and contrainsulin hormone play their role in deciding the rate of the glycolysis in the liver so this i was talking to you regarding the positive and negative allosteric modifier of pfk1 coming to the next aspect of it i'll be talking to you about this highlighted fructose 2 6 bisphosphate compound which i said is a very important positive allosteric modifier so for that let me tell you fructose 6 phosphate 2 fructose 1 6 bisphosphate is the reaction which is catalyzed by pfk1 enzyme this is the glycolytic step which is catalyzed by pfk1 enzyme please understand there are certain molecule of fructose 6 phosphate in the cytosol which are not going to glycolysis rather they are converted to fructose 2 6 bisphosphate in a separate reaction catalyzed by pfk2 enzyme and this fructose 2 6 bisphosphate in turn is converted back to fructose 6 phosphate by action of one another enzyme called fructose 2 6 bisphosphatase enzyme this you need to understand that there are two enzymes one is pfk2 another is fructose 2 6 bisphosphatase which are deciding the synthesis and breakdown of fructose 2 6 bisphosphate when when pfk2 is acting the fructose 2 6 bisphosphate is synthesized and its level is increased in the cytosol and when fructose 2 6 bisphosphatase enzyme is acting then the fructose 2 6 bisphosphate is converted to fructose 6 phosphate by removal of inorganic phosphate phosphatase means removal of inorganic phosphate so the second phosphate is getting removed and pfk2 phosphofructokinase 2 it's using atp and that phosphate is linked at second position to give you fructose to 6 bisphosphate so in nutshell I have told you that this particular compound fructose to 6 bisphosphate is synthesized from fructose 6 phosphate by pfk2 enzyme and this in turn is converted to fructose 6 phosphate by action of fructose to 6 bisphosphatase enzyme This is the same fructose 2 6 bisphosphate which I was telling you is a positive allosteric modifier of PFK1. I was telling you here. So, whenever fructose 2 6 bisphosphate is 2 6 bisphosphate is high, the PFK1 activity is allosterically increased. And whenever fructose 2 6 bisphosphate level is declining in the cytosol because of overactivity of fructose 2 6 bisphosphate, is that time this positive effect is abolished. And PFK1 activity is down regulated. To add the next note over here, let me tell you that this PFK2 is the enzyme which is active in dephosphorylated form. And this is the enzyme which is active in phosphorylated form. Phosphorylated form. This is active in dephosphorylated form. PFK2 is active in dephosphorylated form. And fructose 2 6 bisphosphatase enzyme is active in phosphorylated form. So, depending on the hormone, one of these two enzymes are active at a time. Both the enzymes are not active at a time. If insulin is acting, listen carefully. If insulin is acting, the enzymes are dephosphorylated. So, if there is well-fed state and we have insulin that insulin acts on liver and it dephosphorylates all the enzymes which are affected by insulin and undergo covalent modification those enzymes they undergo dephosphorylation this is the basic rule which you should understand that insulin dephosphorylates protein so once there is glucose and there is insulin 
there is dephosphorylation of enzymes, various enzymes. PFK2 is dephosphorylated and that becomes activated. And fructose 2 6 bisphosphatase become inactivated because of dephosphorylation because its active form is phosphorylated form. So now what you understand when insulin is there, which enzyme is active? When insulin is there, which enzyme is active? Only PFK2 is active because this is dephosphorylated and activated. So fructose 2 6 bisphosphate is synthesized and synthesized. But this is not decomposed to fructose 6-phosphate due to inactivity of fructose 2,6-bisphosphatase enzyme which is now inactive in dephosphorylated state in presence of insulin. So what happens in presence of insulin? I repeat once again, in presence of insulin, the level of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate increases in the cytosol. And because of this, the positive allosteric effect on PFK1 is seen and PFK1 activity is increased and the glycolysis in the liver is increased. So insulin increases glycolysis, this everyone knows. Insulin increases glycolysis in the liver. How it increases the glycolysis? I've told you, insulin first dephosphorylates PFK2 and activates it, which increases the concentration of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, which in turn acts as a positive allosteric factor for PFK1 and activates its activity. And this PFK1 activity, when increased, increases the glycolysis. Coming to the role of glucagon, for that I need to draw the reaction once again. I am now going to talk to you what happens when glucagon is there. Glucagon when it is there, it is a hypoglycemic hormone. It is secreted when glucose level is low in the blood. Obviously, whenever the blood glucose level is low, liver will not take that glucose for glycolysis. Rather, liver will spare that glucose for peripheral use. So, in hypoglycemia, when there is glucagon, the liver glycolysis will be decreased. So that we are going to learn now how in presence of glucagon the liver glycolysis will be decreased. So for that I need to draw these things once again fructose 6 phosphate to fructose 1 6 bisphosphate catalyzed by PFK1 enzyme and we are talking about its regulation by fructose 2 6 bisphosphate compound. This fructose 2 6 bisphosphate, as I just now told you, is produced by fructose 6 phosphate. It is converted back to fructose 6 phosphate. But for synthesis, you need to have PFK2 enzyme, which is active in presence of insulin, which is active in dephosphorylated form. And for degradation, you have fructose 2 6 bisphosphatase enzyme, which is active in phosphatase enzyme, which is active in phosphorylated form. This is active in dephosphorylated form. This I have discussed you before itself and I have told you that this fructose 2 6 bisphosphate is a positive allosteric modifier of PFK1. Now let us see what happens when glucagon is acting. When glucagon is acting, the cyclic AMP is released and that in turn activates the cyclic AMP dependent protein kinase and that tend to phosphorylate so many proteins. So there occurs phosphorylation in a CAMP dependent manner. So, this phosphorylation inactivates PFK2 enzyme, but this phosphorylation activates this fructose 2 6 bisphosphatase enzyme because this is active in phosphorylated form. I repeat once again when glucagon is acting, the cyclic MP is produced and that uh, activates CAM dependent protein kinase, which in turn phosphorylates number of enzymes in the cell the PFK2, the fructose 2, 6 bisphosphatase, all are covalently modified enzyme. They undergo phosphorylation in presence of glucagon. PFK2 undergo phosphorylation and becomes inactive. That is why I have crossed it. And uh, fructose 2, 6 bisphosphatase undergo phosphorylation and it becomes activated because its inherent tendency to, is to get activated in phosphorylated state. So now what is going to happen? You see, when glucagon is acting on the hepatocyte, Due to inactivity of PFK2, new synthesis of fructose 2, 6 bisphosphate is not taking place, number one. And number two, whatever fructose 2, 6 bisphosphate was already existing in the cytosol, which was produced at the time of insulin, is converted back to fructose 6 phosphate by action of fructose 2, 6 bisphosphatase enzyme because that is active now in presence of glucagon and so the level of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate is declining and declining further. 
it's not synthesized newly and whatever was there it's converted back to fructose 6 phosphate so declined level of decreased level of this fructose 2 6 bisphosphate will have less impact on pfk1 this positive effect will be abolished on pfk1 so pfk1 activity is going to be decreased when fructose 2 6 bisphosphate level is decreased the pfk1 activity is decreased because fructose 2 6 bisphosphate is needed for pfk1 allosteric activation so when this is decreased pfk1 activity is decreased when pfk1 activity is decreased then rate of glycolysis is going to decrease so now you understand how the glycolysis is going to down regulate in presence of glucagon the hypoglycemic hormone and physiologically that is important whenever we have insulin in our blood it denotes the glucose in the blood and that time the liver glycolysis will be increased how that is increased that i have told you here the insulin will dephosphorylate enzyme so pfk2 will be active and fructose 2 6 bisphosphatase will be inactive so this will increase the level of fructose 2 6 bisphosphate which will have positive elastic impact on pfk1 when slowly the glucose will abolish from the blood by such kind of metabolism then glucagon will be secreted and that glucagon will down regulate the glycolysis in the liver by phosphorylating the enzyme the phosphorylation of pfk2 will inactivate the phosphorylation of fructose 2 6 bisphosphatase enzyme will be activating this enzyme so this fructose 2 6 bisphosphate will not be newly formed and whatever was there will be converted to fructose 6 phosphate back so this amount will be declined in presence of glucagon so the positive effect also will be less on pfk1 and pfk1 activity will be decreased and that will reduce the rate of glycolysis in the liver so this in nutshell is the regulation of glycolysis at the level of pfk1 which is the rate limiting enzyme so i will keep this video short to explain you just this pfk1 uh, role in glycolysis and how hormones are having impact on regulating the rate of glycolysis in the liver and also you should understand the energy status of the cell A amp and atp amp denotes you energy deficient state atp denotes you energy abundant state how that energy state will determine the rate of glycolysis i have told you if there is energy deficiency denoted by presence of amp the rate of glycolysis is increased because that's a lot positive elastic factor if the atp level is increased this being a negative elastic factor the rate of glycolysis will be decreased citrate denotes the proper oxidation of the glucose so whenever the citrate is there it denotes that enough of the glucose is getting oxidized so rate of glycolysis is decreased Proton, protons are also having impact on the pfk1 activity because uh, if there is anaerobic glycolysis there will be uh, lactic acidosis and the protons will be more and if more protons are there it will result in acidosis to avoid the problem of acidosis more protons will inhibit the pfk1 activity so that more of the lactic acid is no further produced so this is how the glycolysis is regulated at pfk1 step Thank you very much for more such difficult topics and um, clear understanding of such kind of regulations. You can subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon. Thank you very much.